In town and country in Roswell, we're here for the title match action of the scratch division of today's JBT event. Nick Lee looking to win for the second time this weekend. He's never swept a double tether event in his JBT career, and he loves town and country, so it's a great opportunity for him to do so. Taking on Mason Edmondson, they're the last two survivors in today's survivor format. Mason coming off a red hot 279 game with a ring in seven in the tenth. Nick with all the momentum on the weekend, however. Mason struck in his first frame. Nick whiffed the head pin in his first frame, but covers up the spare, much to the light of Vinny. That's Vinny. I don't know why that's Vinny, but it is. Nick's had an exciting survivor round, as it tends to always be. He got by Chris Brown when there were six bowlers remaining, 246 to 245. And his 220 game last was enough to be the second advancer, defeating Josh Helmick, who wound up in third. Josh earlier beat Big Brother Matt in a survivor match, so interesting stuff. And 10 in the pit there. Pulled on the town and country house pattern today, and that's a uh, stand somewhere in the middle, throw somewhere to the right, and pick an arrow and watch it hit the pocket. Plain old, easy, high score in house today. Took plus 17 to make it in scratch division, so a little over 200 average. And Plenty of 220 and 230 games were losers in Survivor today. And Mason has looked good right from the start. He had a big string back in game one just to open up the day. And has had a, numerous attempts at perfection all throughout the day. In Survivor, we started out with four and a pair. They bowled one game and the low score was out. So no matter how well you bowl, it can all fall apart in one game. And that's the nature itself of title matches and making it look easy right now as he just shredded three racks right there. Well done. This is Harvey. This is Harvey. <laughs> now one of our classic Roswell limbo shots. Yes. Or I didn't count it, but it looks about right. Oh boy. Uh oh. Cheyenne is gonna have to attack Vinny here to get her money back. Don't, don't leave Vinny like that. I love this town. <laughs> Lee looking to tie up the match with the triple. Oh! Nick for years has the fastest strike ball on tour. And when he hits a condition where that's advantageous, he is one of the deadliest, winning his eighth career title yesterday, looking for number nine here. And that ball speed seems to match up pretty well here in Roswell. Good spare shooter, hard and straight at the 10 pin, no trouble having it. Lots of nervous Broncos fans all around me as it's Tebow time as they take on Pittsburgh. Charger fans to my left say, whatever. <laughs> see Mason, the two-handed approach. Don't see too many two-handed lefties. Oh, as he's been carrying those corner pins pretty well all day long and make it four in a row extend his lead. Typically left-handers have a little less lane play over there so a straighter approach you'll see out of a lot of the higher scoring lefties because they don't really need to hook the ball a lot from the left side. They can just go right up the five board all day long. Jared would you get Josh's third place? Good job Josh. So it's, it's just unnecessary for a lot of lefties to develop. Ooh. Oh, oh my goodness finish the thought it was it's just sort of unnecessary for lefties to develop a lot of rotation often uh, Cassidy Schaub the one exception there it's the only two-handed lefty I can think of of course our own Wesley Lowe sort of a semi two-hander and now Mason's gonna try and make the first ever 710 on our internet telecast and not to be there and actually that was kind of a I don't want to say silly move there maybe a sloppy move not getting that one pin account so that's two on the double and you never know if you're going to need that pin later on. I don't like that move. I've certainly liked everything else he's done, though. 
Don't ever give an extra pin to a veteran like Nick. He's been doing this for too long. He knows to take advantage of every possible situation. Bzzz. It's amazing when Nick leaves flat tens. Do you think at that ball speed, that would never happen? But instead, that one hit like a pancake. Left a very flat ten. Glad he got the eight out. But it's also a function of the pattern here. No matter what they lay out in Roswell, it just pushes all the way down the lane by the end of the day. So there's a lot of oil, especially in the middle towards the back end. And we saw some five sevens, some fives. You know, those are the type of hits that you'll see when they're not rotating correctly into the pocket. And it just covers the 10 there. We got uh, Wojo and Brandon Navarrete and Brendan Coombs bowling the semifinal three-way game right over to, to the left. The top two scores over there will advance to the handicap title match. Oh, saw by his lottie language he wanted that ball to push. It did not push and got no love off it either, leaving the 4 9. Big trouble early on here for the Tucson. Makeable split for him though. Got a chance. Oh, wow. Boy, I think he thought he had it. I thought he had it too. That ball moved a lot in the last two or three feet of the lane to just skid by the 4 9. And big time trouble here because Mason looks locked in. Did you see that? Did you see that? I thought I saw another second alien. I'm confused. You betcha. Kevin Ives, another Texan, had four amazing games to go plus 230 in the qualifying round to easily lead qualifying, but Survivor will get you, and he was out in round three of Survivor. Mason qualified at plus 125, so a 225 clip through qualifying, not bad in his own right. Boy, it doesn't matter if he has the whole lane or not because he's throwing the same shot over and over again, too. He has a career high finish on tour of second. That was back in December at the doubles. I'm looking like he's on his way to improving on that here. Nick can still max out for, what is that, 234? So not over yet. Edmondson in the 230s already. Just losing the look all of a sudden here is Lee. And he wants to win this game really badly. It's his last year of JBT eligibility and you want to start to you know, sort of do things you haven't been able to do. This is the cash in year, so to speak. He would love to uh, have his first ever double header sweep. As they get the Didwood. What is, what is, did you, have you seen this? I'm not sure. Are you seeing this? Are you catching this? I'm not sure what's... I think, I think Vinny's pal is... No trouble at the six, but big trouble in the match. See, he gives it sort of the, I don't know what to do, look. Can you have an amazing comeback? Be sure to watch part two and we'll start the handicap title match in that part as well.